the odd life of Errol Flynn. On the 25th of October 1834, Lord and Lady Flynn were proud new parents to their son, Errol, who was born under rare circumstances, which was highly unusual for the time. London was a big place to raise a child, and in years to come, they would learn just how rare and unusual the circumstances of Errol's birth were. In 1837, they were invited to witness the coronation of the new Queen of England, Victoria, which was a wonderful ceremony. In 1839, Errol was playing out on the green as they'd moved to a town outside London the year before. He was five years old at the time, and this was when it started becoming clear how rare and unusual the circumstances of his birth were. But not that clear yet. In September 1846, he began his education at Sherlock's, where he was chosen for Colindor House. His size was what gave it away to his teachers and classmates, as he was still the size of a five-year-old despite being nearly 12 years old at the time. He was growing much slower than his peers, who thought it was strange. Then came his 12th birthday, and it was a wonderful celebration. Was he ever going to grow up properly? In 1850, he began his fifth year of study at Sherlock's, having been made a prefect and had grown a few inches in the last four years. So he was finally as tall as his peers. They were thrilled their best classmate was their size now and started asking his opinions. In 1852, he began his seventh and final year at Sherlock's having been made head boy, and it became clear his own confidence was reaching its peak. He was already 18 by the date of his first student council meeting of that school year. In June 1853, he left Sherlock's and applied for a place at Coursegrove University to study business, which he began studying that September. In June 1857, he graduated with an honours degree in business and joined the staff at Flynn Industries, his father's business, which he was thrilled to join, as was Lord Flynn, to have his son on board. In 1863, he was promoted to assistant manager after just six years of employment, and his colleagues were very happy for him. Despite being 29 at the time of his promotion, he still looked only in his early 20s due to his slow ageing. In 1864, Lord Flynn retired, leaving him in charge of the company, promoting him instantly to manager, and everyone applauded him for this promotion. In 1866, Errol met a beautiful young maiden named Louise Goddard, and the two immediately fell in love and married. In 1867, Errol became a first-time father to a daughter, Elsie. They loved her to pieces and wanted the best for her. In 1869, he became a father to their second child, a son, Jacob, who they loved to pieces and wanted the best for him also. In 1871, Lord and Lady Flynn were killed in a mugging rescue gone wrong. This meant Errol had inherited everything in the will, meaning he now owned Flynn Industries and was now Lord of Flynn Manor, and the title of Lady had transferred to Louise, and they moved into Flynn Manor and brought in a nanny to help raise the ch their children. In, 18, in 1878, they watched proudly as Elsie went off to Miss Norma's Academy for Girls for the first time as girls were not permitted at Sherlock's at this time. She'll be fine, dear, Louise assured him. I know she will, honey, he replied. In 1880, it was time to see Jacob on the train, off on the train to Sherlock's for the first time. In 
and it was an exciting time for them, as both their children were now in private education. In 1884, Errol celebrated his 50th birthday, and it was a wondrous occasion. All of this, despite his still very youthful appearance. In 1886, tragedy struck, as Louise fell ill and passed away within days of falling ill, leading the family into a fit of severe depression. In 1892, Errol was running a check through his family's medical records when he learned of Louise's genetic condition, which caused her untimely demise six years earlier. It was a genetic defect that led to her death. In 1894, Errol celebrated his 60th birthday and his children threw him a massive party to celebrate. In 1895, he attended the wedding of his daughter Elsie to her boyfriend Ted Smith and it was a gorgeous ceremony. In 1896, he attended both the wedding of his son Jacob to his girlfriend Nancy Stone and the birth of his grandson Hugo Smith, son of Elsie and Ted. He was very proud of both his children for their accomplishments. In 1898, he attended the birth of his granddaughter Jane Flynn, the daughter of his son Jacob and his wife Nancy, and really thrilled for them. In 1901, he retired from Flynn Industries, leaving his son Jacob in charge of the company. In 1904, Errol celebrated his 70th birthday and everyone came to celebrate. It was then that Jacob noticed a grey hair, but didn't bring any attention to it. In 1912, the family witnessed the launch of the RMS Titanic, not knowing of the tragedy that was about to befall it. In 1914, Errol celebrated his 80th birthday, and he was proud to have made it through life to be an octogenarian. Even his children and grandchildren were amazed by it. This was also the year the war started. In 1918, the war ended, and he was awarded an OBE by the king at the time. He turned 84 about three weeks before the war ended. In 1923, he became a great-grandfather as Jane gave birth to a son named Errol after him. Although he was born out of wedlock, Errol still loved his great-grandson. In 1924, Errol Sr. celebrated his 90th birthday, and it was a glorious occasion. In 1929, businesses all over the world closed down due to a major crash in the stock market, but Flynn Industries was able to stay open somehow. In 1934, Errol Sr. celebrated his 100th birthday and it was a marvellous occasion as he couldn't be more grateful for his loving family. In 1939, another war broke out and his children, grandchildren and great-granddaughter were all drafted whilst he moved to the countryside and took in two children who had been evacuated. In 1940, he began tutoring them in hopes of educating them by the end of the war. In 1945, he brought the now teenage children back to London and was asked to help restore it after the impact of the war. Over the next seven decades, he continued to live on and amaze everyone he met. And in November 2018, he died at the ancient old age of 134 years and two months old. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have a magical time.